Welcome everybody. This is Floral live from the Marais. Welcome to the tour, or as we say in French, bienvenue. And today we are going to explore one of the most sought after area to live in Paris. Around La Place des Vosges is a neighborhood named the Marais. I am going to tell you what means Marais. So welcome to the tour and let's start it. So, I am on the right bank of Paris. I am in an area which used to be totally different in the early Middle Ages, as it was an area that was often, often under water. Why? Because when the river was flooding, all this area was under water, so people called it the swamp. Exactly, that's what Mare means, the swamp. So it's no longer a swamp since the 1600s. And this is where they built the first royal square of Paris. Paris has five royal square, including, you know, the famous Concord Square. And actually, this one, where we are, was inaugurated in April 1612. It is nowadays one of the most expensive places of Paris to live. So, we have the house of a famous writer. I am going to show you. And imagine that the Marais, this area, is an aristocratic neighborhood from the early 1600s to the French Revolution in 1789. Then the revolution made that the nobles, the aristocrats who used to live here, had to leave if they wanted to keep their head on their shoulders. And then it started to be one of the poorest districts of Paris until the 1950s. Now the famous writer Victor Hugo used to live in that building. Victor Hugo, you know, he wrote, amongst other books, Les Miserables, The Mis. And you can see now the King's Pavilion. And in the middle, you have a medallion of the King Henry IV. Let me show you the medallion. You can see it right there. And you can see the homogeneity of the architecture on La Place des Vosges. So, as I said, it was named Place des Vosges. But the original name was the Place Royale, the Royal Square of Paris. Vosges is a French département, you know, like a district. That was the first one that fully paid its revolutionary taxes. So to honor them, during the revolution, they turned the name from Royal Square to Place des Vosges. So, Yes, you see a big advertisement, but actually, let me show it to you. It's true, it's not very nice, but with the money they make for the ad with the advertisement, it will have help to renovate the building. So Julie, that's why you have an advertisement. It will help to pay the renovation of the building. It's a special law in France. They do the same on the Louvre, for example. So 36 different pavilions, we are now going to leave La Place des Vosges and you can see it's a very popular place. Look at that. The Marais, I would say, I think, is the most popular neighborhood of Paris because on the weekend or on holiday, this is packed. And it's a miracle that we still have the Marais the way it is because you find in the Marais many aristocratic mansions that we call Hôtel Particulier and it was such a poor neighborhood that in the 1860s, they hesitated to destroy the Marais. In 1925, they hesitated to destroy the Marais. Then again, in the 1950s. But finally, the government decided to keep the Marais and renovate it. They were also opening museum, libraries to attract a cultivated population. And actually, it worked. Nowadays, the Marais is one of the most expensive districts of Paris. And Place des Vosges is definitely one of the top five most expensive places to live 
in Paris. So I would like to show you what is the oldest graffiti that I know in Paris. Look at that. It's on the wall and you have the date. Can you read? 1764, Nicolas. So we believe it was a writer named Nicolas Rétif de la Bretonne. And nowadays people write the name with like, I don't know, a spray can or, or some, you know, some other device. But back in the days you had to carve them like Nicolas did in 1764. On the right, you have L'Ambroisie, a very good restaurant, a three Michelin star restaurant. Very discreet, but very nice. And uh, American presidents are often going there when they visit Paris. They are going with the French president to L'Ambroisie. So L'Ambroisie is a good restaurant. So I went on their website to see the menu. The menu looks very good. There is just a problem. There is no price. No price on the menu on the internet. So I think it's not a good sign. Now, let me show you a secret passage. We are going to explore one of the most beautiful aristocratic mansion of Paris. Welcome to the garden of the Hotel de Sully. I'm stopping if you want to take a picture. Do you find the building beautiful? Can you write me in the chat? Because it's beautiful from the garden, but it's even more once we are in the courtyard. So, and do you hear the birds? Do you hear the birds? Yes, you're in the heart of Paris and you hear no cars, nothing, just the birds. This was the property of that man who was the finance minister of the King Henry IV. So the private mansions in Paris, we have 400 of them. The private mansions are often built with the same organization, not necessarily the same style, but it's what we call in French, maison entre cour et jardin. That is to say a house between a courtyard and a garden. So we are in the garden and as it is a public building, we will have the chance to cross it. I will take you to the courtyard, which is my favorite in Paris. So let's enter the Hotel de Sully and reach the courtyard. On the way, look at the beautiful ceiling which is painted a painting from ceiling painting in the 1600s so that's pretty nice and now welcome to the courtyard below you can see the former stables and as you can see we have modern horses instead but where you had the horses more than 315 years later, you have the modern horses and the cars and things don't change. Let's continue to explore the Marais together. We will reach a very noisy street, La Rue Saint-Antoine, the Saint Anthony Street. And you could, will be able to make a comparison with how quiet the garden was five minutes ago. So now, we are in La Rue Saint-Antoine. That's a former Roman way that used to be above the swamp. It is nowadays famous for shopping. And uh, I will show you a beautiful church, a church named St. Paul, St. Louis. So, ah, perfect, now the sun is behind a cloud so let me show you i am in the middle of a street but look at this beautiful church and i will show you a nice cafe like a couple of months ago they added a lot of flowers it's named la favorite saint paul 
And since they brought, look at this, I'm going to turn around and look at this beautiful cafe. Do you find this beautiful? It's a big trend now in Paris. Lots of cafes are adding a lot of flowers. And since they did that, the terrace is always full. So yeah, it's a big trend now in Paris. More and more cafes are doing the same. So we are now going to enter the Jewish district of the Marais because the Marais, since the Middle Ages, is the traditional Jewish district in the city. And we are now arriving in La Rue des Rosiers, the most iconic street of the Jewish Marais. Rue des Rosiers, street of the rose bushes. So we are arriving in the very busy part of La Rue des Rosiers. There is, I mean, there are a lot of places selling falafel everywhere, like over there. But I will show you where you can find my favorite. And my favorite place is named Las du Falafel. And you will see a line. Like you need to wait like 20 minutes before getting your falafel over there. So let me show you one other beautiful set of flowers. So the Marais is about lots of cafes, fashion stores, good restaurants. Oh, look, oh, too late. I always have a look in these kind of old houses when I see someone going out. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's very, very busy. So you can see another private mansion over there and you will notice it has a very big door, high and wide enough so the post-drawn carriages could enter. You see the private mansion on the left, you see the entrance and we are going to see some more. Soon we will see the Hotel de Carnavalet. So you know, fashion store everywhere. And Carnavalet is actually with the Hotel de Sully, considered to be one of the two most beautiful private mansion of the city. So why is the, was the Marais an aristocratic neighborhood? It's because remember, it was a swamp. Then they drained the water out of the swamp in the early 1600s. That is to say, there was, you can see another private mansion entrance. That is to say, there was a lot of free space to build the private mansion, to build the aristocratic mansions. That's why you have so many of them in this district. So there are most of the time from the 1600s, sometimes from the 1700s. So we are now again on La Rue des Frambourgeois and imagine drive here it's better than the Rue des Rosiers but uh, it's never a good idea to drive in the Marais when you have a holiday so we are going to see what is now look at the sky look at the light I mean you know I'm a photographer and uh, the light is always important when you take pictures but today I find it really beautiful. So yes, let's continue. I'm going to show you the Hotel de Carnavalet through a railing. Oh no, I will be maybe able to enter. Let's go have a look. 
So the Musée Carnavalet is one of my favorite museums. That's the Museum of the History of Paris. And the door is open. Bonjour, je peux juste me mettre là deux secondes Je, fais un, je, je filme en deux secondes. J'en ai, non, mais je, je reste 30 secondes. Je, je fais un aller-retour. Merci. Look at the beautiful courtyard of the Hotel de Carnavalet. You have a very nice place to have a drink, to have a tea or a coffee. And you see, I had to negotiate huh, because they are making the people leaving the place. And look at the beautiful. Uh, that was the property of Madame de Sévigné, a very famous woman in France for the literature. And yes, we have seen the beautiful architecture of Hôtel de Carnavalet. Ah, mais je le, je le connais. Merci. And I hope you liked it. It is said with, to be with the Hotel de Sully, the most beautiful one. So, yes, it would be nice to see it inside. Elisa, why not making a tour there? I will have to try to test the connectivity. L the connectivity, sorry, I used the French word. And you can see another turret. It's pretty rare like this. That is a very ancient private mansion on the left. It's a very ancient one. It's uh, uh, from the late 1500s. So it's one of the oldest in Paris. And it is named Hotel de Lamoignon. So it was the property of Mr. de Lamoignon. So I will show you the size of the door of the gate that you, you have to go through. Imagine the size of the uh, holes drawn carry edges. And this is one more time the property of the city of Paris. You can see the name Hotel de la Moignon. And this is where you had in 1763 the first public library opened in Paris. Nowadays, at the historical library of the city of Paris. So we will enter and I have some good news if you want to see Paris by night. I'm going to show you the beautiful Hotel de la Boignon in front of the door, the beautiful door. I am going to show you the facade. And this is a nice place, very quiet. One more time, an aristocratic mansion. This is a nice place for us to finish the tour. Well, take care everybody and have a nice morning, afternoon or evening, depending where you are. Bye bye, merci, as we say in French, thank you. Until the next time.